And let's go over some of the information that's been happening about Diddy. Have you guys heard about this? This is fucking crazy. So courtesy of the New York Times, have you guys fucking heard of this story? It kind of um came on my flipping came. Is that a pause? Anyway, I saw it on my um, timeline recently. And yeah, this is a wild story. So the headline says, Sean Combs is accused of by Cassie, his former girlfriend, of rape and years of abuse in a lawsuit. So as most of you will know, um, Cassie, the legendary pop star, singer, R&B act from back in the day that, you know, Diddy was involved with for a very long time, um, has now come out with these fucking allegations, which is crazy in a new lawsuit. So let's fucking read the article here, courtesy of New York Times. Sean Combs, a producer and music mogul who has been one of the most famous um, names in hip hop for decades, was sued in federal court on Thursday by Cassie, an R&B singer once signed to his label. Um, in the suit filed with the, at the federal district attorneys in Manhattan, Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura and who had long been Miss, Mr. Combs' romantic partner, says that, the, that not long after she met him in 20, 2005, when she was 19, he began a pattern of control and abuse that included ply, uh, plying her with drugs, beating her and forcing her to have sex with a succession of male prostitutes while he filmed the encounters. So all those rumours about fucking Diddy being freaky were real, innit? it? There was always rumours that he was into some really freaky shit, like really, really freaky shit, not just all, oh, you know, threesomes and whatnot. No, 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 no. Some actual freaky shit is true because she's alleging that Diddy fed her a cocktail of drugs and made her fuck male prostitutes while he filmed or jacked off in a corner. Madness. In 2018, the suit says near the end of their relationship, Mr. Combs forced his way into her home and raped her. <gasps> Whoa, I didn't know this. So they're saying recently, so the last time, so when they, you know what, this explains so much. There was a time, I don't know what happened, but a few months ago, Cassie was in the news for something and I think Diddy made a comment maybe on her profile or something he made some sort of comment and Cassie's now I think I don't know if she's married or whatever but she's got a new guy who she's with now and they have kids and shit I remember he left a very spicy comment or reply back to Diddy and at the time I remember reading it thinking this is a bit over the top why is he going so hard at Diddy I know he used to fuck her back in the day but it's just an ex but now it's making more sense why the boyfriend or the husband of Cassie now went so hard at Diddy in the replies because he's obviously known about this information from ages ago. So he didn't respect, you know, he didn't want any, you know, no confusion from Diddy. Like, if you talk about my wife, I'm going to come at you straight away. Do you know what I mean? He went super hard at her. So this explains it because 2018, allegedly he raped her. Jesus Christ, bro. After years in silence and darkness, Miss Ventura said in a statement, I'm finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself for the benefit of other women who face violence and abusive relationships. I also want to know, though, if this happened from 20, 2005 to 2018, why is she speaking about this now? Is it because of an NDA or something? Maybe the NDA ran out or something. It expired, and that's why she can talk. That's actually crazy, though, isn't it? Think about Like, if you're a woman and you're involved in the industry... It has to be a big red flag if the guy says, sign an NDA. If someone makes you sign an NDA, that has to be the biggest red flag ever. I think you can have like non-verbal NDAs, like technically in your head, where you don't want to waste the opportunity by going out and blurting things out because you, you want to be invited back. Like, Because I think to myself sometimes, <clears throat> if I was one of those bachelor type of dudes, right, I would want to treat women amazingly and make them have a good time so that they could keep coming back because sometimes going out keeping looking for random girls to you know to fuck or to hook up with if you're that bachelor type it can be a bit tiring isn't it it's a bit exhausting to keep going out all the time so why not have a nice because again if you want to live that kind of hedonistic life why not have a roster of girls that you can always depend on like kind of like your kind of quote-unquote taz angels that you kind of fly out everywhere and you they go around with you so that, that, that they are happy to like just be around you because you treat them nice you you buy them things whatever the stuff that you did like you do that stuff but you just treat them well you treat them so well they don't want to go and speak to the media because they want to be invited back again that's probably the best way to go about things but i feel like the guys who will give you a paper to sign they are the ones that you should be worried about because most likely they're going to be into some fuck shit that's like those guys in the fucking middle east that shit on girls um chest and shit for money that's some really scary stuff, man. You have to be very careful about that thing. If you're a woman in the industry and a guy makes you sign an NDA to hook up, there's something very, very off there because 
if you're both mutually if you're adults and you're both consenting to having a good time you know she's okay to like you know um give up whatever she wants to give up sexually or romantically for to hang out with you you're willing to spend money on her why do you need to sp you know sign shit to like for her to shut up and not speak about the experience is it gonna be that bad i don't know i don't know uh <clears throat> Uh, da, 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 da. let's continue here after this, da, da, da. in response a lawyer for mr combs ben braffman said mr combs vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations for the past six months victor combs has been subjected to miss ventura's persistent demands of 30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship which was unequivocally rejected by the blatant blackmail despite withdrawing her initial threats miss ventura who's now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with base outrageous lies aiming to tarnish mr combs reputation and seeking a payday which is understandable why diddy's lawyer will say that you can't protect your client but i think if you're looking at this objectively cassie's been with she was with diddy the longest except for his like baby mothers and stuff right and she i think has been really good at staying out of the limelight as soon as she broke up with diddy she kind of disappeared she didn't really she wasn't really around that much so i'm i'm leaning to believe in this story because she wasn't clout chasing as soon as it ended with diddy she could have easily gone on radio stations and spoke about him or not spoke about him and just been around do you know what i mean but she purposely kind of stepped out of the limelight to live a somewhat quote-unquote normal life so i'm more prone to believing this is true because of that rejection of the limelight because she's a good looking girl she's got plenty of stories to share she's probably an interesting person i think away from the camera she could easily be around doing whatever she's doing like being a media person but she didn't so the fact that she's coming out now, I feel like there's a bit more weight to it, personally. And it also explains, think of, think of Diddy's actions in the last few years. He's been on this fucking Mr. Love shit. He's been trying to spread positive, all this sort of like really trying too hard shit. It makes me feel like maybe there's some truth to it, personally. What are you guys saying in the chat? Let me just quickly go scroll here. Um, once again, AZ is the real fresh, <laughs> the real fresh, the, the real fresh and fit lols. Um, no, I, I don't want to be like those guys at all. No, thank you. Um, did, didn't Kim Porter also accuse him? Yeah, exactly, Josie. Exactly. Yes, true. RIP fucking Kim Porter, man. The way she passed was really odd as well and sad. Like, out of the blue, allegedly, according to a toxicology report, there was no, like, you know, drugs. In, no, there was no drugs that caused her death or some shit. No weird foul play. So, I don't know if that's like her dying of a broken heart or something, but that was really sad how she passed away, man. Like, and she, and for all all intents and purposes, she seems like a lovely person. Um, I feel like some, what, what's fashion robot saying? You're know saying, what? I feel like some people will try to use what? To be a red flag, you, you don't think red flag, that isn't a red flag. Okay. Um, I feel some people use, some people will use women to collect info from you if you're like Drake famous. Okay, cool. Set you up, expose you. Ah, okay. I see what you mean. I see. So NDAs, if someone gives you an NDA, it's not a red flag because sometimes if you're Drake level famous, you have to protect yourself. You mean, yeah, of course. The, 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 that I guess makes sense, but I don't know. I just think there's a way of going about things. Even if you're a good dude and someone tries to snake you, people will still have your back because they know you're a good dude. They'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But I think a lot of these guys are basically scumbags or some of them have that little like DJ academics thing where like you slightly hate women. You kind of this. there's a weird thing I think with some dudes I've seen, especially nowadays in this like new media space where people are making money really quickly. I feel like some guys like end up despising women because when they get rich, they see that their, op their options open. This is my own theory. I feel like some of those guys in that manosphere space, they end up hating women because before they made money, like fresh and fit guys, good making a good example, academics being a good example, right? They're not the most attractive men in the world, like physically and just like spiritually as humans. So they probably find it hard to get the caliber of women that they were inter interested in to be interested into them. Then they become famous, get money, and suddenly those girls are into them. I feel like it it builds up a level of resentment inside of them for women because they see the difference in their attitude to them now that they've got money. You forget what I mean. So I think a lot of them carry that resentment into the interactions and into the hookups and shit. And it becomes a weird, like, kind of like, they're sort of like despise. It's, it's all like they despise fucking these women. Like, it's really strange. But I get, I think a lot of it does exist in that kind of world where it's like, you know, you, you might be sexually active but you've got a little bit of an incel energy about you because you don't really like them because you feel like why do you like me when i was fat and i didn't have any money that kind of thing it's a bit like eh, whatever um 
Anyway, let's continue here. So, Douglas Wigdor, a lawyer for Miss Ventura, said the parties had spoken before the suit. Wow. So, Diddy knew about this. This might explain why he's all, he's been everywhere. He's been in, he's been in the UK recently on a big press run, making friends and shit. Um, he did a concert with Gigs recently. Uh, Mr. Combs offered Miss Ventura eight figures to silence her and prevent the filing for the lawsuit. So, he did, so, so they were made, so I guess... Cassie's lawyers made Diddy aware that she was going forward with this lawsuit. Diddy tried to silence her by giving her some money, but she wants all the money. And she wants to put it out there also. So, bloody hell. Miss Ventura's case is the latest in a series of sexual and civil assaults filed recently against the prominent men in the music industry, including Stephen Tyler of Aerosmith, the executive L.A. Reid, and Neil Portno, the former head of organization behind the Grammy Awards. All these guys in the music industry are fucking... God almighty. Uh, but Stephen Tyler is not, is not that surprising, isn't it? Back in... Those rock and roll guys back in the day were... They were fucking teenagers and shit, underage girls and stuff, so they're on the madness. Um... What you call it? Uh, Diddy, Mr. Combs founded Bad Boy in 1993 and became one of the premier figures of commercializing hip hop. His net worth is estimated at 1 billion last year, blah, blah, blah. Mr. Combs, who is in his career, has variously been known as Puff Daddy. Diddy and Love may be the most famous music executive of his generation, but the suit depicts Mr. Combs as a violent person who, beyond repeatedly assaulting Miss Ventura, asks her to carry his gun in her purse. That's what he did to J Lo Jennifer Lopez, isn't it? They say that's why, that's why him and General Lopez break up, innit? They had that dispute where, like, a gun went off. I think that's Shine thing. And she was like, you know what? I like black men, but I don't like black men that much. And she ducked out. Um, he was responsible for blowing up the car, a rival suit. Da, da, da. Okay, cool. So let's read the actual suit itself, right? Um, no, actually, let's, can we keep reading it or should we read the rival suit? Let's keep reading it. Um... In naming additional defendants, the court papers assert that others who worked for Mr. Combs had helped him to control Miss Ventura. You see, this is the thing I hate the most about these cases. I say it again and again. I think monsters like Diddy and like Harvey Weinstein, all these guys, they're always going to exist. You're always going to have monsters in our society. The responsibility of us non-monsters is to call monstrous activity out to shine a light on it, put it out in the limelight and actually expose them, lock them up, whatever it may be. But I think when normal non-monsters are complicit in these crimes, that's when it becomes really dark and evil because then there becomes this cabal, this fucking silence culture thing, whatever going on where people don't want to say things because they're afraid of the repercussions. But then what ends up happening is that you have more victims. We have to call that shit out. You have to call out the evil shit that you see and then that's how it kind of, you could kind of keep some sort of like reins on it. But when good people, quote unquote, are turning a blind eye or they're enabling the evil people, that's when we'll never get rid of this shit. It's really, really sad, man. Honestly, I fucking hate it. Um, but yeah, um, Mr. Combs helped him to control Mr. Vent. Sorry, in naming additional defendants, the court papers assert that others who worked with Mr. Combs had helped him to control Miss Ventura at times by threatening her with retribution, like suppressing her music if she did not obey his orders. Oh my God. Or by helping to conceal his behavior. The suit which named Mr. Combs and a number of his associate companies um, as defendants seeks unspecified damages. So they're accusing the record label and shit of knowing what was going on, but silencing her. Yo, yo, this is fucking wild. I'm beginning to wonder. I'm beginning to wonder. I'm beginning to wonder. Do you remember when Diddy's got an ongoing case at the moment, a dispute with um Ciroc on or, or the brand that owns Ciroc, I think, which is Diageo, right? I think Diageo owns Ciroc. He's having an ongoing dispute with Diageo because he feels like he's owed more money for blowing up Ciroc. I wonder... Oh yeah, big up Angel Ranger. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for the super chat. Clarification. You give the advice those MFs should be giving. I appreciate you for spitting that reel from a real dude instead of in saw grifting. 100. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, Angel Ranger. Thank you for the fucking support, brother. Um, I was going to say, I wonder if Diageo parted ways with Diddy or one it didn't want it to renew because of this was happening in the background. I wonder if Diageo knew, because those big companies, those big liquor companies, those corporations, they are multi-billion dollar fucking, you know, behemoths. I wonder if they knew. I wonder if they knew. No, I said, Josie, he's not, um, I don't think Diddy's own, he doesn't own Ciroc anymore. He he never owned it anyway. Um, Ciroc was owned by Diageo. 
but they brought yeah the, Soroka is really good really fucking good um but if I remember correctly Diageo was selling Soroka already but they brought him on board to kind of push it market it then he started to make the other flavors I think he made all the exotic flavors like the pineapple and mango all this sort of shit but the brand itself is owned by Diageo but Diddy I think was currently suing them because he feels like he's owed more money or some shit like that but yeah, Ciroc is fucking beautiful. It's really tasty, to be fair. But I wonder if Diageo knew about this, and that's why they broke they broke the agreement. I wonder. Hmm. Let's continue. There's Cassie there, absolutely beautiful young lady. Um, and like I said before, she's kept herself out of the limelight, bro. You don't really see Cassie around. She's not really at industry events. She's not on the radio show. She doesn't do podcasts, tour, email, interviews and shit. So I'm I'm beginning to think that this is probably true because she's kept her head down and minded her business. So it, it, And obviously it's come at this time too. So it feels like maybe the NDA expired or something. And probably they're gathering information and you know evidence and stuff. Because if you go after someone like Diddy, you have to make sure you dot, you dot your I's and cross your T's. Imagine if this is the thing that brings down fucking Diddy. Not the Keefy D stuff. All of us thought that the Keefy D stuff, right, and the confession from him and maybe his connection with the death of fucking Tupac um, would be the reason why he goes down. But maybe it's this. Jesus Christ. According to Miss Ventura's suit, um, she was swept into Mr. Combs' jet left lifestyle not long after meeting him and signing with Bad Boy, which when she released her debut album in 2006. But the suit says she soon began to assert he soon began to assert extraordinary level of command over her life. In addition to controlling her career, he paid for her car, apartments, clothing, and even had access to her personal medical records. What? According to the suit, the results from an MRI scan she had for memory loss, possibly caused by drug use or by beating she said she suffered from Mr. Combs, went directly to Mr. Combs. So she's alleging that Diddy beat her so bad she lost her memory. Wow. Wow. Mr. Combs also provided Miss Ventura with copious amounts of drugs, including ecstasy and ketamine, and urged her to take them, the suit says. Often became violent and beating her multiple times. So he made her take cat and ecstasy to get freaky, I guess, because, you know, guys who like to get freaky love a bit of ecstasy. A bit of MDMA, like as Rick Ross said, put a little bit of molly in her drink, she ain't even know it. Right, that fucking line from Rick Ross that cost him his Reebok deal. Fucking hell. The suit says Mr. Ventura never went to the police because she feared she would merely give Mr. Combs another excuse to cut her. Wow. In one instance in Los Angeles in 2009, the suit says Mr. Combs became enraged when he saw Miss Ventura talking to another talent agent, then pushed her into a car and kicked her repeatedly in the face, making her bleed. According to the suit, Mr. Combs then had her, then had his staff bring her to a hotel room to recuperate for the week. She asked to go home to her parents, but Mr. Combs refused. So, so he beat her up, put her in a hotel so she couldn't go around with the bruised face, I guess, and looking all fucked up. And then she just wanted to go up to her parents and said no. So actual control. Fuck, bro. I wonder what Young Miami will say about this because he's currently dating Young Miami, right? From the City Girls. I wonder what she's going to say about this. This is fucking wild. The suit says that after seeing the violent repercussions reciting of Mr. Combs and the extent to which he would isolate her from her support network, Miss Ventura felt that saying no to Mr. Combs would cost her something. Her family, her friends, her career, or even her life. And though she tried to leave Mr. Combs, the suit says he sent his employees to lure her back. Oh my God. In one instance described in the court papers, Miss Ventura says that in early 2012, Mr. Combs grew so angry about her dating rapper Kid Cudi. Yo, did I didn't know Cassie went out with Kid Cudi. Do you know that? Shit, big up Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi that he... So, um, Miss Ventura says that in early 2012, Mr. Combs grew so angry about her dating Kid Cudi that he said he would blow up the rapper's car. Around that time, the suit says Kid Cudi's car exploded in a driveway. Yo, Diddy's got real hitters, isn't it? Diddy's got hitters and killers that actually, allegedly, he paid for, you know, the smoking of fucking Tupac. And now they're alleging that Diddy blew up Kid Cudi's car when he found out he was smashing um, Cassie too. Number one, I didn't even know Cassie and, and Kid Cudi dated. That's a new to me. 
But the fact that he would do that, bloody hell, bro. Imagine how scared you have to be at that time. Because Cassie must have been, what, early 20s, mid-20s, fresh in the industry. The first person you meet is the most one of the most powerful people in the music industry, especially in black entertainment, in Diddy. Imagine how scared she was. Fuck. Through a spokeswoman, the Kid Cudi confirmed that Miss Ventures' account and that his car had exploded. This is all true, he said. Oh, my God. A few years into Miss Ventures' relationship with Mr. Combs, the suit says he began coercing her to engage in a fantasy of his called voyeurism. <laughs> Diddy is a freak for real. In which she was directed to have sex with succession of male prostitutes while Mr. Combs watched, masturbated, took pictures and shot video. Somebody's going to find out who these male prostitutes are. If this story, if this part of the story is true, somebody's going to find out. Oh, look, Stannis. Exactly. I think Academics was right, innit? I called him out and said he was being paranoid. But Academics was right not to meet Diddy, innit? He knew. Diddy, academics knew. Academics was right not to meet Diddy. I think he knew something. But I wonder if they're going to find us male. If they find us male prostitutes, it's a rap for Diddy, man. If they can corroborate this story, it's a rap. According to the suit, Mr. Combs called these encounters freak-offs, which involved costumes like masquerade masks and lingerie. They continued for years, taking place at high-end hotels across the United States in Mr. Combs' homes. The suit says that he instructed Miss Ventura to search websites for escort services to become male sex workers. So he didn't even get the escorts himself. He made her get the escorts. Go on, babe, choose one. Fucking hell. Okay. Okay, drugs were supplied at these events, which Miss Ventura says she took because they allowed her to disassociate herself from the horrific encounters. So she would be happily taking the drugs because it would make her not be present. Yo, this is some dark shit. Just imagine though, this is her first encounter of the music industries. Or the music industry, sorry. This is her first experience, is this. No wonder she hasn't been able to make music again. You can't trust the industry. If this the first encounter you have is with the most powerful person, he has people in the industry who are silencing you and who are aiding and abetting his freak behavior and his abuse and shit, you're probably going to be very disillusioned with the industry. That's probably why she doesn't want to fucking do any music anymore. The industry has completely been tainted now because of your experience. God. According to the suit, Miss Ventura would delete videos from their instances that had been shot on her phone. But Mr. Cohn told her that he had access to those videos and on the flight once made her watch a video she thought she had deleted. Oh my god. The suit says as a result of these sexual encounters in different cities, Miss Ventura was a victim of sex trafficking. So technically that's oh my god, Diddy, bro. It might be a rap for you, fur. It might be an absolute rap for you. And he's got so much money that they're going to come after, you know, a lot of that. God damn it. The suit also accuses Mr. Combs of sexual battery, sexual assault, and violations of New York City's gender-motivated violence laws. Ms. Ventura's suits include several accounts of unsuccessful attempts to escape Mr. Combs' control. In one example, the suit says that during a freak-off in Los Angeles Hotel in 2016, an intoxicated Mr. Combs punched Miss Ventura in the face, giving her a black eye. He fell asleep and she tried to leave the room, but Mr. Combs woke up, followed her into the hallway where he threw glass vases at her, sending glass shatters f shattering throughout the corridor, according to the court firing. filing. Sorry. The hotel security cameras captured the incident, but the suit claims that Mr. Combs paid the hotel 50k for the footage. See what I mean about evil? Even the fucking hotel aided him and his fucking nonsense. See what I mean about the evil? Evil people exist, but the hotel should have told him to fuck off and they should have sent that shit to TMZ or something. That's fucking horrible, man. That's fucking horrible. They had all that footage of that abuse of him hurling these vases at fucking Cassie in the fucking hotel corridor and they let him pay for it. That's the scum. That's what I mean about the evil. <sighs> the court filings say that in 2018 after Mr. Combs and Miss Ventura met for dinner he forced himself into her apartment and raped her while she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away after that the suit says he left him she left him for good 
So the last encounter they had, he raped her. Bloody hell. Miss Ventura married Alex Fine, a personal trainer, the following year and now has two young children. According to the complainant, her association with Bad Boy ended in 2019. So she was still technically on the label a year after that rape. Miss Ventura's case, like other recent sexual lawsuits, is being brought under the Adult Survivors Act in New York law that allows people to say they're a victim of sexual abuse and file civil suits after the statute of limitation has expired. The one-year window to bring these cases under law ends next week. That law is cited in Miss Ventura's complaint and in the statement she addresses the importance. The expiration of the New York Adult Survivors Act fast approaching, it became clear that this was an important opportunity to speak up about the trauma I have experienced and that I'll be recovering from the rest of my life. Oh, shit, bro. Holy fuck, did he? Holy fuck. Well, to be honest... There was just too. There's been too much smoke about fire. There's been rumors about Diddy from the longest time. Um, the really sad thing is that most likely a lot of people in the industry knew about this. I'm sure this is this is probably this is news to us regular people, but I'm sure people in the industry knew about this. That's a really hurtful part about this. Like I said before, the one thing that really hurt me the most when I watched that Harvey Weinstein documentary, I forgot which one because there's plenty, but the main one that came when it came out wasn't that Harvey Weinstein was a monster. We all, you know, whatever, we all knew he was a monster. Bury him under the jail. We know that. He's a piece of shit. But the thing that hurt me most about that Harvey Weinstein documentary were the accounts from women when they would say, oh, Harvey Weinstein tried to, pro tried to proposition me. He tried to invite me to his hotel room. He wanted a massage. Da -da -da -da. And all these women said no. But then they would follow up by saying, he asked me if I had any friends and they'd recommend friends. So these women would not be cool with Harvey Weinstein abusing them, but they put their friends in the line of abuse. That's the thing that really cut me up. I was like, oh my God, that's horrible. If you're going to call out horrible behavior and stop it and stop it for yourself, you should also just call it out in general. You shouldn't put your friends up as fucking sacrificial lambs so that you can get out the fucking crosshairs of this abuser. And that's the same thing happened with Diddy. If it was that like people didn't want to cross him, didn't want to fall you know, on his bad side, so they turned a blind eye or they kept quiet about it, even though they knew what was going on. Because the rumors about him being freaky, the rumors about him potentially being bi or gay, all this sort of stuff, now it's all making sense. All this gay and bi rumors are making sense because he's clearly into voyeurism and shit. He's clearly into all that kind of freak play. He's got things called freak-offs. Like, he likes having you know whatever he likes to do but obviously he can cross the realms of abuse and get a little bit sadistic according to what fucking cassie has been alleging here which is absolutely horrible especially when you consider the age gap that they had her first experience in the industry as a teenager as a young woman and then the first experience you have is with this guy like can you imagine how crazy that must have been no wonder she felt scared she didn't want to speak up because you legitimately feel like you can't and he had control of her career. She was signed to his label. He was basically her manager. They, they slept together. They were producer. Like, man. And he used, to, he, he used to literally carry her around like she was a trophy, like a handbag. Do you know what I mean? She rarely spoke to the media and stuff. Like, it was pretty crazy the control he exerted over that girl at that time. Um, but yeah, prayers to fucking Cassie. And yeah, I, I'm curious to see how this fucking case rolls out. And most likely you know, a lot of people are going to come out of the woodwork. And I think if people in the industry come out of the woodwork and start saying, oh yeah, we knew, I hope the people on the internet give them, give them fucking fire. I hope everyone that comes out says, oh yeah, it's an open secret. I hope they get dissed as well. Like if it was an open secret, why didn't you speak up for her on her behalf? If she couldn't speak up because she was too close to it, why didn't you speak up about it? Hopefully those people that say oh, it was an open secret, I always knew you don't get no brownie points because of that. Because you should call out evil when you see it. Don't get no brownie points for me because you knew but you didn't want to say nothing. Like, go get fucked. You know what I mean? Go get fucked. Um, but yeah, what are you guys saying in the stream chat? What are you guys saying? Um, I hope she has enough proof. Um, Space Kai, it seems like Diddy um, probably deleted a lot of stuff. Yeah, for sure he deleted it. But I think she probably has enough evidence for him to at least settle out court. And I think for somebody like a Diddy, for his legacy and how he's viewed, that will be an admission of guilt. If Diddy settles out of court, that'll be an omission of guilt straight away. So for someone of his legacy, of his standing, he won't want that. So that is already damaging enough, I think. And the fact that he spoke, she's spoken out about it, you're most likely going to hear other victims come forward too because that fucking fear stuff is going to subside. Um, 
uh, NJ Ranger. They should make an uh, for the Fungi Spirit call allegations and have it uh, like the wire. Um, Sarlacc says the R word and the violence is criminal. The other stuff I'm not sure about. Um, okay, cool, fair enough. Um, remember when it first came out, Hollywood was yelling at us like that. I don't know him. Don't work for him exactly. Um, drugs and boredom equals disaster. Exactly. Drugs and boredom with unlimited wealth. He probably addicted to dig juice as well. Um, I'm drugged and bored and all that led me to the, the Diddy got gay. Diddy's just gay to keep up with his payments at his point. 30 percent of <laughs> 30% off code for his dig juice is fucking hilarious. But yeah, um, that's it. What can you do? What can you do? 